Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Apple released iPadOS 26 Beta 1. iPadOS 26 Beta 1 is available to developers and iPadOS 26 Public Beta 1 will probably be out by the end of the month or early July. Last year they said July and they released it a little early. As far as device support, well, it's most of the same things, but you can see the list here and I'll link that in the description so you can check it out as well. And as far as the overall size, well, it came in at almost 15 gigabytes. It was about the same size on the iPhone as it was released alongside many other updates, Mac OS 26 beta one, watch OS 26 beta one, along with TV OS 26 beta one, vision OS 26 beta one and AirPods beta as well. Of course, with the iOS and iPad updates also. Now, as far as the build number, let's take a look at that and then we'll talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then to general and about. And as you can see, the build number is 23A5260N. It's the same build number that we have with iOS 26 beta one, and this is an early beta. Now they have updated this quite a bit with all the same features of iOS 26 beta one. So anything that I covered as far as the major changes and features there, I'm not really going to cover all of them in detail here. I'm going to cover what's specific to iPad but I do want to share the new design. We have the new liquid glass design. You can see here more readily in the control center. So you can see it in the upper right. Some people don't like it as they say it's not contrasty enough, but it doesn't have any borders and you'll see what it looks like there. Depending on your background, of course, it will change a little bit and be different to read. If you don't like the icons the way they are, you can go into light and dark modes by pressing and holding, going to customize. And then of course you have a new option for clear. So if you want all of them to be clear, you can do that. However, I find that this kind of looks nice, but then it's hard to differentiate between the different apps. The same is true with tinted where they've updated that. So that gives you an idea. We'll go into dark mode, brighten the wallpaper there, and let's change it back so that it's actually showing the dark mode icons. There we go. So. That's what it looks like on the iPad. And this is the layout that I have. Liquid glass goes across everything, not only to settings, there's a new camera app and everything else. And you'll see that opened up into a window. We now have a new windowing system for full multitasking. Maybe we want to open up Safari. You can see it here. So let's shrink that back. And if I press and hold at the top, I can move this around. Maybe I want it to this side. I can just fling it over there. Let's grab this one here, fling it to the right. And then it sort of resizes itself. Now we also have the option, depending on what you're using, you can resize it or you can just leave it as is. If you want to get out of this, swipe up, they go to the side, swipe up again, and then they disappear. If we go into Safari, you'll see we have Safari here. We can resize it like we always could from the left corner and change the way it looks. And in the multitasking, that looks mostly familiar. But if we swipe up again, maybe bring in, let's bring in this one here and then move this aside. And you'll see here, there's one more thing at the top, but we can move that aside and you'll see that we have windows here now. So if we want to slide up, maybe we'll bring in something such as, uh, let's go in here. Let's bring up the camera again. So we'll go into camera and now we have three windows open. So you'll see, as I grab the top there, we actually have the option for a new menu bar as well. So you've got all of these windows open again, swipe home, they get out of your way, tap them and they come back in. We also have the little menu in the upper left, just like we do on Mac tap on it. And then we have the X we can minimize here, bring it right into the dock, or we can tap on it, expand it or close it. So you'll see it functions just like a Mac as far as that goes. So I think that's nice. They've got a full windowing system here where we didn't before. The other thing we have is if we press and hold, we have more options. So if I press and hold on there, then we can move and resize. We can tile windows. So maybe we want three different ones. Some people were concerned about that. So if we want one here, we can bring it here and let's bring it over to here and it's full screen that way. Let's flick it to the left. So it is a little bit tricky to get used to. And some people have asked, do we have split view? And we do, if you want to use it that way and it's next to a window so you can resize it like you normally do. Then again, swipe home, swipe up again, and they go away. Of course, you may have already seen, we have a new window or menu at the top when we're in apps. So if we go back into this here, we'll see if we can pull down. You'll see we have Safari file, edit, view, history, bookmarks, window, and help. So just like we had before with Mac, now we have all of these things in Safari. So you have all of your settings here, you have files, and it's much more Mac like more than it ever has been. You have view history and all of the other things as well. So very nice. As far as that goes, I know a lot of people will appreciate this. 
and many people thought that maybe you would need to have the keyboard and mouse in order to do this, but you don't. But if you add that, you actually have more precision as they've changed the mouse. And you'll see here, if I use the mouse, now it's more precise. So it looks like the, mo the mouse cursor you would expect with an arrow. And then of course you could customize it, but it works very well. So again, bring it over to the side, use it however you'd like, and then move your windows across. Again, bring another one in and you can have multiple windows. So that's something that's new. Again, each application has its own menu bar at the top. So if we go into camera, we have one there for camera with our different settings, files, edit, image, and more. So I think this is a great move. Again, we have our little traffic signal light here and we can just close things like we normally would. So if we go over here, we can resize and it's just completely different as far as the operation of it. You cannot use command Q to quit the app though, but we can close it out like that. Now we also have support for calligraphy now. So if we're using the pen or pencil, we now have the option to utilize that. So if we go into maybe notes here, now with the Apple pencil, if we go into notes, we have an all new read pen here. We have different options for opacity as well as the overall thickness, as well as the angle. So. You'll see we can change it here, change the colors, of course. And then if I just write the name Aaron, you'll see what it looks like. I'll write my last name here and it has a unique look to it. So if you're someone that writes in calligraphy using a reed pen, it's now an option here. Now, one update I think people will appreciate on iPad OS is files. Files is much more like Finder on the Mac. We have a new list view, so you'll see lists here with icons and columns, of course, but we now have the option for list. That's actually what I use on my Mac regularly. And we also have folder customization. So if we go to on my iPad, you'll see I created a new folder, press and hold, go down to customize folder and tags. Now we can change the folder, maybe put some icons on it. You could even add emoji. So if you wanna add emoji to it, you can do that, add tags, change the way it looks and fully customize it if you'd like. So let's clear that for now. You'll see maybe we'll make it red, we'll go back. And now the folder is red and then we have workouts here. So you can change it to whatever works for you so you can easily recognize it. Now with my custom folder, if I press and hold, I can go to add to and then dock. Now it adds it to the dock and I can go directly into it. So we can open new custom folder and then it fans out just like it does on Mac OS. So you can add multiple things here. So if you want to add more folders, more changes or files or anything, you can then add them to the dock. So I think that's a nice little update that they've added. And you can also set specific things or files to open up in specific apps. So if we go into recents, we'll go into recents, we'll press and hold. This is a JPEG file. And then you can say open with, and then you can select the app that you want. So if I want it regularly to open up in Photomator instead of preview, the preview is the default. I can then change that now. And speaking of preview, you may have already noticed I have a new preview app on my desktop or my homepage here. So you'll see the preview app. It works just like it does on Mac OS. You can go into, well, we'll go into this one, this thumbnail of one of the more recent videos. We'll go into it. And then we have options here at the top, of course, where we can edit all the different things that we had before on Mac OS. So if we want to go to file export, and then we can change the different formats. Maybe we want JPEG, we want PDF, PNG, TIFF, and then we have size options. So just like you could do this on the Mac, you can now do this on the iPad. Now, one thing I think many will appreciate if you're working on Logic Pro, Final Cut, LumaFusion, and you need to export files before you had to stay in the app. If we go into Final Cut, we'll go into this one here. You'll see this is from iOS 12.3 beta one. Maybe we'll export this. So we'll export video. You can select whatever quality you want and then tap export. It may take a moment and in future updates, you'll be able to swipe home and it will no longer fail and have to start over. So I tried this here. Then when I went back in, it said failed. So it looks like they may not have added this yet. I looked for a setting and didn't find it. If you found it, let me know in the comments below, but that will be a very nice feature once it's available. With iPad OS 26, they've updated it. So maybe you're in a FaceTime call or a Zoom call and you wanna use that audio and video for say a podcast, you can export it to high quality video, but also plug in something such as a high quality mic. We have a Scarlett 2i2 here that you can plug in XLR microphones. And if we go to the control center, 
We'll go to FaceTime controls. You'll see we have a new option here or a new system pop out for your microphone. So you'll see Scarlett 2i2 fourth gen. And if I had a mic plugged into this, we could see that. And then of course, use all the other features. This is a little bit buggy at this time. I'm sure it will get much better with future updates, but we'll have all of those options. So if we want to record a podcast or something, we can do that in high resolution. A new app they've added is one we've wanted for a long time on iPad, and that's Journal. We have the full journaling app here with insights and places, and places is a new feature as well. So if we go into that, if you actually have any places you've visited and it recognizes this, it's not fully synced yet across my iPhone, it will actually show up here with the images that you've used in your journal entry and show you the different places you've traveled. So it can be anywhere in the world, and you can just zoom in and out and then see your journal entries for that. You can also create multiple journals now. So if you want to make another journal, we'll just call it journal two. We can do that. And then it works just fine. We have an all new journal. We can have separate ones and journal here. Maybe we want to journal about something completely different. We now have the option. So all new updates here, as far as journal, of course, we have new apps I've shown in other videos, such as games and quite a few changes throughout. One other thing I wanted to mention is there's updates for family. So if you have a family that you manage, like I do, parents can now move kids to child accounts more easily and then have better parental controls. They've also updated things such as communication safety, under screen time, communication limits, and the app store. So if those are things you use, they're now updated. Now, as far as other features, well, all of the same features on iOS carry across to iPadOS. Like I mentioned before, I have a very thorough video about 45 minutes long going over every single feature we've found so far. So lots of changes here. And as far as performance, well, performance seems to be okay. Now that it's been a day or so using this, it seems to be fairly smooth, but it does get sluggish and choppy at times. So if you're wondering if you should install iPadOS 26 beta one, I would highly recommend against it on your main device, especially if you use it for productivity or work. Otherwise, it seems to be okay. It seems more stable so far than iOS 26 beta one, but it is an early beta. So just keep that in mind. You'll see it's a little bit sluggish there going into the app library. So little things all around that still need refinement and that's fine. It's an early beta and this is pretty typical. As far as battery, well, they did update the battery settings page, just like they did on iOS. So you'll see here, if we go into battery, it takes a moment to load. And then we have things such as charging and it gives you more insights into charging and how long it's going to finish. So we'll give it just a second here once we plug it in and it will give us more information on this. Now this is specific to certain iPads. Not all of them have this, but give it a moment. This will update. And if we scroll down here, you'll see this is all new. So if we go into all battery usage, it's been pretty terrible. 54% yesterday with just one hour and 29 minutes of screen on time. It's using a lot processing in the background, thanks to the OS being updated and then changing or whatever it's processing or indexing. So you can see that here. So far, 29% in one hour today. If we go back, scroll to the top, you'll see it says charging. And on iOS, it actually will tell us when it will complete charging. So far, I haven't seen it on the iPad, but it may show up after I give it a few more minutes. But either way, it does show on iPhone, but only certain iPhones for some reason. But again, I do like the extra information, but it's not great battery life so far. As far as anything else, well, so far, there's definitely a lot of features we're still discovering and I'll continue to look for them. If you found anything else though, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.